Hey, YouTube! Uh, it's Mouth of the Reptiles, and first of all, Merry Christmas. Hopefully a few of you join us on this Christmas day as we open one of our most anticipated clutches of the year. Uh, what I'll tell you is I have what I believe to be three good eggs out of six, possibly a fourth, but I'm not too hopeful on that egg. Two of them definitely went to shit. And again, we've had more egg death with the move, and these were some from the move. So, really quick, because I can't wait, I'm just going to tell you what this is about, and then we're going to hop right to it. Uh, and then, of course, we'll slide over to Patreon afterwards. This is the clutch that is uh, our Het True Ghost clutch. So it's our Het True Ghost female, and it is our Het True Ghost spider male. Now, they were a sib-to-sib -sib pairing, so they were, but they were underrelated parents, so we used two of our snakes, bought from different places to make them, to make these Het True Ghosts. If you remember, this is a female that came out very, very dark, and the male spider has a dark in the side. So we're hoping... Everything's dark, right? We're also would love to see some true ghosts and some cool shit like that. But uh, let's see what we do. So we're going to, and also hopefully everybody had a Merry Christmas. Uh, I know I did. I just got back from visiting the family. I got to see family from uh, Aaron's family. I also got to see family on my side from my father's side. Uh, most of you don't know, but my father, he actually passed away when I was a young teenager. So it was really good to get to see that family. I love doing that. And I got to talk to the rest of my family. So really awesome Christmas for me. I hope you guys got to visit and have a great Christmas where you're at. Let's flip these around, get this set up, and see what we can do. Of course I'm working in my makeshift craptastic office. It's a great office. That's not so bad. But, uh, you know, and remember I cannot see your comments right now. So just know that. These, of course, are the two that are bad. Something on there was, was they started getting a little fungusy. We wanted not to have that spread, and we were always hopeful, so we used some athletes for the powder. We separated them. It didn't work. They're bad. They're just still in there because I didn't want to mess with these eggs too much while they were cooking. But let's go ahead. We'll start with the good three, and since this one's probably bad, uh, we won't. We'll do it last. That way, if it smells, we can get rid of it. You know what? Let's just. No, I don't want to touch those till the end. Good reason for that. Okay. <laughs> Gotta find a spot to cut because I'm so nervous. I'm just hoping these eggs are good. This is a really hard shell, which honestly has me a little bit concerned. But there is a snake in there. Now, if that dark is genetic, I'm gonna pick this up for just a second, guys. I would expect to see remnants of it on every single baby because it would be a recessive gene. Okay. Oh, that thing just moved. So we have a live baby in there. That's sign number one that's good. Now, I can't see enough of this one to see what's going on. Because remember, we have ghost and exanthic in there as well. Is that still showing up? Yeah, move that back. So we could definitely have spider. But what else is in there besides spider? Right now I cannot tell. So we're just going to put that back there. One good egg. This eggshell feels nice and soft. This is what I like to feel. So I have a good feeling about this. That shell being so hard, I don't know if that thing could have got out of it, to be honest. It was a very strong shell. Not the leathery feeling that I'm used to. Okay, let me pick this one up. And again, we're not going to make big... Holy shit balls. All right, guys. Uh, this is awesome. I got to see a little more of this and share a little more of this with you. So this isn't necessarily going to prove the dark out. And again, I don't expect the dark to really prove out. I would love it to. But, you know, it's a shot in the dark. Ha, <laughs> pun intended. So like, it's not like we're going to be bummed if it doesn't. It'd be great if it did. But I didn't expect it. But what I think I'm seeing here is, yeah, I'm pretty sure, give me a little movement. There it is. I think what we're seeing there is likely a true ghost. That would be an exanthic ghost. That would be awesome. Now, I'm not going to say 100% sure. We did hit a little bit of a vein there. You can see in the egg. Uh, that's what that's from. Not a big deal. But a true ghost would be awesome. I, that was what we were really going for and why we saved them back. So if we actually hit that project, that'd be, I mean, I'd be ecstatic. Let's go for egg number three. 
And those were pretty long odds. We were talking about a double hit and hitting a double recessive. But it doesn't look like the Exantics I've seen, and there's definitely Exantic in there. So I'm pretty sure we hit the True Ghost. What the hell? Okay, that one might be just an Exantic. But that's a little strange. So out of three, I, and again, this may not be one we can prove this out because if we keep hitting on the recessive stuff, it's going to be very, very difficult. Now, this is an egg that I don't think is alive, but we're going to cut it and see. It also feels very, very thick. Well, there's a little bit of blood in there. That's a good sign. There is a snake there. But if it's a live snake, this is what I don't think it is. Oh, shit, that one is alive. Okay. So we do actually have a live baby in there. I'm not going to tell you it's formed perfectly because it's just, and I'll show you why I'm saying that, what I'm saying. Although I'll be honest, you're not going to get a good look in that egg. Uh, sorry, because of it. So what I was looking at, see how this egg here, it just looks like this part wasn't doing so well. So I'm not sure if what's in there is, but you can see it move right there when I open that up. That's actually its head right there. I can tell you it has spider in it, and I don't think it's a regular spider, but I can't see much more. And because it's such a precarious egg, I got an opening in it. We're going to call that good enough. I couldn't even really get to that part to cut because it's so degraded like these things are, which are definitely bad. So what we'll do is we'll review really quick. We definitely have some sort of spider in there. Uh, in here, we believe that's true ghost. That's fucking great. Oh, pardon my language. It's Christmas. That's really great. I believe that to be an Exantic in there. And uh, yeah, this one, it's got spiders, so I can tell you. So what we'll do is we will see. Killing you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, oh, so you thought you lost them. Don't lose anybody. All right, guys, I'm not going to stay on here too long. It's going to be a little bit of a short video. So if you got a couple quick questions, hit me up now. I'm going to get these back in the cooker. And then we are going to slide over to Patreon. Now, like I say, I'm not seeing anything right now that would tell me that the dark gene is... Uh, I'm going to try to take you guys with me, huh? Oh, that the dark gene would be confirmed. Which we didn't expect, right? When does breeding season end? It just kind of depends. Had it... Can I show you the incubator? We've shown our incubator build. I'm going to walk into there now. It's kind of a disaster, so bear with me. But uh, first time for Patreon. Well, welcome, Gilbert. We'll be doing a Patreon exclusive on this once I get these back in the cooker. It's been just a... No, kitty. No, kitty. You can't come in here. My cat's trying to follow me in here. We've been gone a few days, so he is, like, wanting to know why he is not getting all my attention at the moment. Uh, so let me ask you the incubator. There it is. It's a big purple fridge. Uh, that's basically what our incubator is. No secrets there. It's pretty much empty except for one clutch of ghost that is all shut out when we were gone. Hold on a second, guys. Sorry about the roller coaster ride that I'll be putting up tomorrow. So, uh, the problem with showing you a lot of my snakes, guys, is they're not at this house. I don't have many snakes in this house anymore. At the reptile house, we fully moved every adult snake. The only snakes here are what is actually hatched out in my incubator. That is it. Everything else has moved, so there's nothing here to show you. That's just the unfortunate thing about the way we're doing these videos. Now, by next year, we're doing all these hatching videos and cutting videos. They'll all be done at the reptile house. So when we get to that point, you'll be able to see everything 
as we do it and everything as we see it. Can we see the empty room? Uh, you know what? I can show you that. Here's the thing. I guess you're probably wanting to see that just for a size reference from the earlier videos, Chris. So I will gladly go back down the stairs and show you that. Or maybe you're just wanting to make me fat ass walk stairs. You know, Christmas food. Can't eat cat. No, you're fine. No. Okay, so the cat's coming in with us. So this is the old reptile room. This is it. What you'll see is an old baby rack there. There's nothing in that baby rack. A little reason for a pre-shed rack till we decided to try the shed in place method and move over, which so far is working pretty good. Uh, learn as you go kind of thing. There's one old cage, nothing lives in it. Uh, it was a carpet sold cage, but this is the room. Give you an idea for size. Pretty good size room. There is a stair stepper right there. You can tell I use that a whole lot. <laughs> uh, no, so Edward the Arcade is actually in the reptile house. So the way this works, in case uh, for you those of you that are new to our channel, is we have our home. This room I'm in used to be my reptile room. So this is where all of our ball pythons, where all the early Olympus videos were filmed. It was all right here. So very nostalgic to be in here. Now it's kind of turned into uh, my wife's workout room and slash going to be her office area as my office is where we just work. And then I will eventually move the flag and the sign. There's still little things. You know, we'll move the incubator as soon as it finishes emptying out and get it moved. So um, all the animals move to the animal house. And the people on Patreon on the top level get to come stay for a weekend if they choose. And then on every other level we draw, they just need to call me and schedule it for the winners and they can come stay. And that arcade is up there on the top floor of that house where the apartment is set up for those people who come stay. So they can come, that way there's more to do than just, you know, sit and look at the lake. Uh, it does have a beautiful lake view, but you have the arcade, you know, where we've got TV set up over there, internet, as soon as they finish installing, everything should be working, all that kind of stuff. So uh, that's kind of the way that works. And we'll probably do more and more videos. As a matter of fact, I got a couple I want to do while we have some babies before they get sold off and shipped out just because it gives me more things to show in the combos. You know, uh, Chad, there's really not... The biggest advantage I can see is so if I pull them, I was pulling them out and letting them separate themselves uh, and or separating them and letting them shed, and then I was having to keep that all moist. By leaving the incubation chamber, the moisture stays really well, and I've had very good sheds, which is what I was told when I decided to try it. One thing I'll need to do is as those babies crawl out, so as I start getting babies out, uh, say when the first ones look like they're ready to crawl out the egg you know, tomorrow or the next day, I will actually take the plastic grate out because I did have one that unfortunately was able to get kind of in the grate, and I had one that didn't survive. And I don't know if it was the grate that caused it, but it might have been. It could have just been the baby. But because it could have been the grate, I've taken to modifying that to work for us. So we move the grate so they can't get pinched underneath there and get kind of stuck. Uh, that way they're just on that perlite. And yeah, take the grate out once you cut. Uh, we don't usually directly cut because I still want to roll, but once they're ready to pop out. Because these, none of them are really sticking their head out yet. Uh, come down tomorrow, the heads will be out, the grate will get removed. Uh, but yes, that way we're not losing that. And it does two things. One, it keeps that humidity really, really high. It keeps the temperature really, really good. gives you really good sheds. Two, uh, I'm not having to sit there and, and fight another rack. that I'm having to put paper towels in, water cups in, clean, and do all that. And yes, Chad, the cut happened already. I do think, I didn't see anything that screams black or like our current dark gene does. So I'm not sure we're going to prove that out to be genetic. And that's going to take a few times. And that's okay. I didn't really expect it to. Uh, if it did... Awesome, because I mean, you know, you have a brand new recessive gene that's darker in color. You're going to be able to demand a really cool uh, price for it if you do sell them. If we would have probably sold them because I wouldn't have wanted to bring their parents back to them just due to the fact that they would need to be uh, branched out. And But we were really trying to make a true ghost, and I'm pretty sure I hit one. And I'll tell you guys now, if it's a girl, it ain't going anywhere. If it's a girl, it's staying with me. Yeah, and so, I mean, you know, we, we learned because we would use a great person I decided to, to steal that from, didn't use a great at all, they incubate differently. So it's kind of a combination of two things and learn as you go. And if you're not improving, you know, you're not, you're not doing yourself a service. And also, if I have something fail, like losing that baby, I think I should share that, even though some people are going to try to blast me for it because it may prevent somebody else from having the same mistake that I had. Uh, just like, you know, we've had a lot less success in the back half of the year 
on hatch rate from the front half of the year, and you can look on our chart and see when we moved and see boom, 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 boom. So I can tell you, Edward, a lower incubation temp is not going to help it. Uh, we ran that test. We, we, we actually used a separate incubator, set it at a really low incubation temperature, sealed that bitch up so it wasn't getting open. There was no temperature swings to see. We hit one super black pastel, which is what you're looking for in the same project you're looking at, and it was a kinked up disaster mess that wasn't survivable. Not a little kink, it was trash. Every other baby was great in there. Uh, one thing I will say for the lower incubation temperatures, we had a lot of really big, healthy babies. We did have one little bitty one that didn't absorb its yolk, but everything else was, was big, chunky, healthy. So uh, I think on average, we're probably bigger than normal. So what I'm gonna probably do next year is kick my incubation temperature down from we typically run about 90 to running about, oh, 89. I'm not gonna go all the way down to 87 like I did with these, but I'm gonna roll it back a little bit uh, be a little bit more patient with things and see if that doesn't give us better results and bigger babies. So we're going to try that. Uh, we're down to one clutch left to cut. Uh, that is it. And that is not in our incubator here because of the problems it was causing once we started to realize seeing what was happening and came to that conclusion that, hey, we think these problems are from moving the eggs from one house to the other. I set up a small incubator in the reptile house and that clutch is over there. So I expect that clutch to be 100% hatch rate. And that is uh, more ghost, a lesser ghost to a double head, uh, head for true ghost spider. So the same father you saw here to there still be all you know, ghost and head ghost, possible head exantics and spiders and lessers and lesser spiders and all kinds of cool shit. So, yes. Well, that's an awesome Christmas present. All right, guys, I'm going to hop up off of here and I'm going to go up and hang out upstairs and switch over to Patreon and wish the people a Merry Christmas there. So, yeah. But the way to get one without issues is get lucky. Like it is. Like I talked to a guy, I won't name his name, and he was trying to sell one that had a slight kink, which I was I didn't purchase. Yeah, I, yeah, he's somewhere. He ran up here. I'm still filming though too, dear, just so you know. And uh, I just didn't see him. Yeah, no, no issue. And so like, he said he was lucky to get one out of three, and to me one out of three just I'm isn't. Loaded. Oh, okay, isn't a way to go. So, uh, I I couldn't do that. You know, one out of three ain't good enough. So if I couldn't fix the problem, I wasn't going to continue to do it. That's where I'm at. All right, guys, let me hop off of here and set up where I can go say Merry Christmas on Patreon. But again, thank you for watching us. Uh, thank you for joining us. This is kind of the end of the year for all of 2019. Uh, there's been some good. There's been some bad. But overall, I am so very blessed. I'm so very blessed to be in the position I'm in with uh, Patreon, with YouTube, and with reptile breeding, um, I have nothing to complain about. So uh, thank you guys so much. I hope you guys join us for 2020. And you watch as we are going to continue to uh, do great things. We're going to continue to grow. We're going to prove every hater and every doubter wrong. That is what we do around here. And I will just squish them under my boot like a bug. So thank you guys. See you next time.